Hi, welcome everybody. It's me, Dr. Carla, today, and you've tuned to another episode of my Global Virtual Clinic. If you don't know me already, I specialize in the removal of cysts and lipomas and have dedicated my YouTube channel in educating people on these two skin complaints. So if you're watching and you're looking to have treatment for the removal of cysts or lipomas, then you've come to the right place. You can find more information on my website, lipomacyst.com. Alternatively, you can visit drkhaledsadek.com. Let's clean that camera, it's a little bit grubby, I don't know why. There we go. So part of today involves the global live chat. So we take a, a discussion on medical conditions from all over the world. But we also like to discuss some of the videos that we've released uh, in the last couple of days and also uh, videos that we're going to be releasing in the next clip. So for those of you who haven't seen it already, we did a twin cyst excision in the last clip where we had two sebaceous cysts, really stubborn cysts with really, really deep um, thickened sacs were present in two locations and we did those on one clip. And before that, we had a couple of other epidermoid cysts located in different parts of the body, some on the shoulder, some on the breast tissue. And the next clip, I have an absolute cracking video for you. Let me just show you. By putting on, uh, what we've got is this really large, and I mean quite large epidermoid cyst right on the shoulder blade. Now, if you're on Instagram and Facebook, you would have seen the thumbnail for this coming clip. So if you haven't seen it, then you could check out uh, those two social media platforms. Remember, I always encourage people to bring their questions to today's global virtual clinic, which we run every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. That's the same time, that's 1.30 Eastern time, 4.30 Pacific time, or 9.30 Greenwich Mean time. So. Let's see who we've got in the house. We've got a fantastic turnout today. We've got over a hundred people watching. So let's see who we've got and let's go through our podium position holdout. Also, let me know what you think about the new format. We're scheduling it in advance so you can see, you can log on, you can see when it's happening. Um, so that's really good. Also some more fantastic news. We've been verified. We've got the gray tick from YouTube verifying that our YouTube channel is authentic by giving us a verified blue tick. So thank you everybody for supporting us. We've had a bumper month. We've had well over 6 million views in the last six in the last 28 days. So thank you so much for that. Remember to spread the word. We need to keep growing as much as we can, educating people on skin complaints. So let's have a look. Let's see who's in the house. Let's bring this camera a bit closer to me so I can see you all a little bit better. Let's scroll up to the very top. Now, for those familiar with the format, we say hello to the top three, the first three attendees. You get podium positions. Let's start in at number three. In that third position, Deborah Ronker. She's in, uh, in at number three. Now, Deborah is in California. I know that because Deborah is a regular viewer. But she's also fighting some of the nasty, really bad forest fires that are engulfing um, a lot of northern parts of California. So, you know, we're wishing everyone uh, to be very, very safe. I know that around the San Francisco area in particular, some of the redwood forests are on fire. So please stay safe, Deborah. Well, everybody is wishing you uh, a, a very safe um, coming few weeks. Margarita from Portugal. How are you doing? Obrigada. Welcome. Welcome. Where in Portugal? Remind me. Was it Madeira, Lisbon, the Maldives? In at number one is Gibby's wife. Welcome, you three. So, Gail Sharp. She's ready for the clinic and she's in East Texas. It's fantastic. We've got so many wonderful states. Uh, we've got people from all over the world, which is wonderful. I know a lot of you are all friends already. And if you're not friends, you will be friends by the end of this show. We certainly are one big happy movement. So let's see who else we've got in the house. We've got Sid G. She's from Southern Ontario where it's hot and humid. And she's ready to watch the videos. Hope everybody's got a cup of tea because the next video is actually a little bit longer. It's 15 minutes long. So um, see how it goes. Now, in this next clip, this case, the, the, the cyst had been there for some time and someone has tried to do some home remedying. They tried to pop it themselves. And as a result, uh, it, it got infected um, and then it regrew. Re but when it did regrow back, it caused a lot of scar tissue. And you'll be able to see that on the skin. There's a lot of keloid scarring. And often when you see scarring on the surface, that invariably means there's scarring under the skin. 
And so the sack was really, really well adhered in that case and a bit of a challenge to take out. So that's why it's a little bit longer. Deborah, welcome, Bridget. Welcome, Sid. Uh, Minnie, how are you doing? M Minnie from Alabama. Minnie Curry, welcome, welcome. Uh, who else have we got in town? We've got Sherry. Welcome, Sherry. Thank you so much. Um, everybody's wishing Deborah um, all best wishes, staying safe. Anne Brooks from Riverside, California. Welcome, Anne. Um, let's have a look. Sula Lally from London. Welcome, Sula Lally. Anne Brooks, how are you doing? Denise Middleton, I got, uh, I got someone who needs your help, but they're scared. And we're in America. Do I come to America? It's a bit difficult because licensing for medical practitioners varies around the world. So my recognitions are all sort of London based qualifications um, and the United States won't automatically recognize that. So me being able to practice in the United States may be a little bit difficult in the same way that sort of you wouldn't like an American doctor coming to England would also be um, faced with the same challenges. Not impossible, but certainly a little bit tricky. Who else do we have here? We've got P. Hughes photos. Welcome. We've got Caroline TomTom. How are you doing? Uh, we've got David Vendetti from the San Francisco Bay Area. So many Californians in town today. Uh, Sula Lally, loving the virtual global chit chat. Terminator T800. Welcome. Welcome. Lisa's in town. Linda Johnson's in town. Julia Friskus is in town. She's from Wisconsin. Awesome. Uh, Pompey Ranch. Hi from Wisconsin. Had a CAT scan. Thought I had a cyst on my thyroid, no cyst. Now I have an ultrasound. Any idea what this could be? Hard to say, hard to say, to be honest. Um, we need to get it scanned, maybe some biopsies, and then we'll see. Let's have a look. Here we have an Adrian Russians from, uh, uh, she's having, having, pest, having chest pain. What else uh, can I do? Um, well, I think you're having chest pain. You need to call a doctor pretty, pretty pronto. Um, Christiana, welcome. Congratulations on getting verified. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Calm down, Sandra. Awesome. And uh, Marco from Hungary. Welcome. The Marco sisters love the channel. They told me uh, from the live chat in the last episode. What can you recommend naturally for anxiety? That's a good question, Linda. Good question. So I think anxiety, I think exercise is probably one of the best forms of treatment for mental health anxieties. Exercise will, by exercising, you boost up your natural endorphins and you get that high, reduces the anxiety, it levels everything out. So exercise, I think, is a cure for mental health. Mighty Mom GSL from Texas, welcome, welcome. Tina Summers from Dublin, awesome, welcome Dublin. Mary Wolf, good evening, Dr. K, evening from Roermond with a coffee and a piece of pie. What kind of pie you got there, Mary Wolf? Let me know. From Tennessee, we've got Brenda Layfever, welcome. Linda Gaskell from Oklahoma. Is Dr. Sarah any relation? She's my sister, welcome. Carrie J. Michael, hello, how are you doing? Joyce Bauer, welcome. How are you doing? People in California, please stay careful. Absolutely, Joyce. Laurie Horst, <clears throat> what can you recommend for sleeping naturally? Oh, Laurie, that is a really good question. Now, uh, natural sleep revolves around what I describe as sleep hygiene. Now, your body is instinctively meant to sleep during the night and be awake during the day because we've evolved on this planet because we circle the sun and we turn around every 24 hours and we get 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night for billions and billions of years. And everything on this planet is revolving around that day-night cycle, that 12-hour day-light cycle. So people who try and disrupt nature by working night shifts or sleeping late or waking too early, their circadian body clocks will be disrupted. And what we need to do is kind of play to our strengths. We need to be sleeping at fixed periods of time. So we want to be sleeping at like 10, 11 and waking up seven, eight hours later. Now, a lot of people, what they do, they come back from work, they're a little bit tired and they'll end up having a nap on the couch, you know? So the reason that your difficulty in initiating sleep is because you're expending what I describe as sleep pressure. That pressure that's gonna drive you to sleep. But if you're sleeping during the day, then you're gonna use some of that pressure and when you need it most to sleep at night, you're gonna struggle and therefore you're gonna struggle initiating sleep. Having said that, the body is in tune with certain natural instincts, certain stimuli that it picks up 
to let it know whether it's time to wake up or time to sleep. So for instance, if it's too hot, your body will be like, can't, can't go to sleep, can't go to sleep. So you'll notice that in the hot weathers, you wanna, you, you struggle, you're Having a hot shower before you go to bed actually helps to drop your core temperature because your skin is all flushed, you dis, you're disseminating heat, and that can help initiate sleep. One of the other important natural stimuli is light at night. There's a lot of light pollution in the environment, especially if we live in the big cities or if you have light at home. So making sure that you have absolute darkness when you go to sleep because the eyes will detect the light and tell the brain that it's not quite nighttime that you should be awake. So you've got to be careful that your eyes, because inside your eye there's a retina and it's got special wiring that goes to some part of the brain called the suprachiasmic nucleus. That is the grandfather clock of your internal sleep clock. So having light at night will disrupt that. So make sure you don't have your iPhone or your iPad or your laptop late at night because that's, you know, fuddling up everything. And then obviously, if it's really loud and noisy, you're not going to get asleep. So make sure it's dark. Make sure the temperature is good. Make sure the sound is nice and quiet. Having said that, there's also a lot of things that we consume that can disrupt your sleep. Number one is caffeine. Number two is alcohol. Number three is food. So people forget that caffeine can last in the blood for over 24 hours and that it's half-life. That means the number of hours it needs for it to go down by 50% is six hours. So if you're having a, a, you know, an espresso at three o'clock in the afternoon, by three o'clock in the morning, you've still got a quarter of that espresso still in your bloodstream. And that means like sort of waking up at three in the morning, having a little bit of sip of your Starbucks and then hoping you're gonna get back to sleep. It's not gonna happen. So I say caffeine consumption needs to be not drunk before, or I mean, after 1 p.m. Don't drink any more caffeine. And that goes with alcohol. Don't drink alcohol late at night and don't eat late at night as well. So I hope that was useful in terms of your sleep hygiene. So there's a bit of sleep hygiene, there's a bit of sleep biology, a bit of circadian biology, a bit of clock biology in there. There's a lot of information to take, so watch it over again if you need more information. Carol Hess, I'm a retired anesthetician. I really enjoy watching your videos. And she's from Austin, Texas. Awesome, thank you so much, Carol. Alma Richardson, stay safe, everybody. Hugs and prayers, everybody in California. Marion from Heavy Rain in Scotland. Ooh, it's probably heading its way down to London as we speak. It's Claire B, greetings from Michigan. Margaret Brace, good health, happiness, and safety to everybody. Princess Zan. Kathy Fusco from Las Vegas, I have a question for you. Uh, why do us viewers get so addicted and mesmerized by these videos? I mean, I, I mean, I hope it's because you, you really like the work and it's enjoyable to watch and it's really fascinating and it's an aspect of the world that you don't routinely see unless you're in a medical profession. So you get that bird's eye view of uh, the operating room. I think it's that, it's that open access, it's that behind doors, it's that fly on the wall experience that I hope that you enjoy. Maybe that's why, but you tell me, what is it about the videos that mesmerize you? You're the viewers, let me know. Mimi Newell, welcome. Prince of Zam is an elephant and castle. Whoa, stay safe. Ron De Burke, during my last live, uh, my husband, uncle passed away. Ah, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Condolence of you and the family. The very next day, my aunt passed away of cancer. Then the day after, my cousin passed. Then two friends passed. I'm glad to be back. Welcome, Ron De Burke. Great to have you on board. Stay strong. Um, let's have a look. Here's what we've got here. We've got Kalista Achukuku. Welcome, Kalista. How are you doing? How are you doing? Let's have a look. Who else do we have? Vicky, welcome from uh, Oklahoma. Welcome, welcome. Joyce Bauer, how are you doing? Annie Reid from Melbourne in Australia. Whoa, what time is it in Australia? Uh, let's have a look. Who else we got here? It's my birthday today. That's Daniela Hesselman. So everybody wish Daniela a happy birthday. Circadian Clock, Khaleesi Shireen, welcome. Paul Whitson from California, River Fire in Salinas, just a few miles away. I hope you're staying safe. Let's have a look. Um, Siji, tell her to watch the Dreams episode 13 with you and Dr. Pixie. Yeah, absolutely. So I covered a lot of sleep biology in my video clip with Dr. Uh, Pixie McKenna, who's 
you know, a, a television show presenter in the United Kingdom. Um, they did Embarrassing Bodies. So I did a, a podcast with Dr. Pixie on sleep biology. So if you if you if you Google that on YouTube, you'll be able to find it. So uh, Kathy says she's loving the videos, and uh, she's also curious as to why we're addicted. I think we need to help her and find out why. Jay Corwin from Cape Town, welcome, welcome. Let's and my sleep is dreadful. I can't sleep more than three hours. You know what? It's very very common that sleep is an integral part of mental health. We know that if you don't sleep, you don't function as well the next day. You know, your memory isn't, isn't, isn't so good. Your decision making isn't so good and that you're slow in your production. Because part of sleeping helps to restore uh, all the information that you've gained the previous day into the different right filing cabinets in the brain. But if you get the disrupted sleep, then it doesn't quite work. And we know that if you have chronic disrupted sleep, that might impact your mood and mental function. So there is a, a cat and a chicken and egg, shall we say, that we know that sleep um, symptoms are associated with mental health. So we know that if you're depressed, you get early morning awakenings or you have altered sleep patterns. But we also know if you disrupt sleep, you can then develop mental illnesses. So sleep and mental health go hand in hand. Let's have a look. Who else have we got in here? Who do we have here? My friends go home and eat breakfast. I don't usually. I eat around four. You know the times. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Belinda, congratulations on getting verified. I love being part of this group and seeing the channel succeed. Thank you, Belinda. And thank you so much for all your Instagram work. Awesome stuff. Uh, let's have a look. Dr. K's voice keeps bringing me back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Sulali, I find your videos most enjoyable and full of education. We need to know how to look after our health. Absolutely. Absolutely. So enough of uh, the live chat. I think we need to move on to what we've all really come here for. And that is this epidermoid cyst on this guy's shoulder. It's really stubborn. It's a long video. There's a bit of blood, but I think you'll enjoy it. I know a lot of you want to see the pile of cyst. I promise you the pile of cyst is coming. That's a massive pile of cyst. I'm still trying to work out how much gore, which angles, how much to show you, how much to hide. So till next time, remember every Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays at 1.30 Eastern time, uh, sorry, 1.30 Pacific time, 4.30 Eastern time and 9.30 Greenwich Mean time. Until next time, everybody. Ciao. Bye bye.